What's going on guys, John Helder here from Codemy.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use images for backgrounds with Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said in this video, we're going to look at using images as backgrounds. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube one to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're gonna look at using images as background and also putting things on top of the images. So this is actually pretty tricky in Kinter. You see, we've got some buttons up here and I've just got a, you know, a fun little Mario background image. I'll show you how to use different ones as well. And I'm gonna show you two ways to do this, an easier way and a harder way. The harder way is better. Uh, but the easier way is easier. So I'm gonna look at both of those methods in this video. So I've got a file called image underscore bg.py using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. So we've got a, our basic Kinter starter code that we always have. I've got it set to 800 by 500 because that happens to be the, the width and the height of the image that I wanna use. So let's go ahead and start by defining an image. And I'm gonna use the photo image widget like we always have in the past. And I'm gonna set the file equal to now I've got a folder in this directory called images. I've, you know, we've used images from that directory a lot of times. It's in the same directory as our image underscore bg dot file, this file here that we're working on, which is the GUI directory. So since it's in the same directory, we can use a relative path. And the name of my image is mario.png. So if this was, you know, not in the same directory, we would have to be explicit. We would go C forward slash uh, wherever. That's spelled wrong, but you get the idea. But since we're in the same directory, we can use a relative path. So, okay, this works for PNGs. If you wanna use like JPEGs and things like that, you, you need to use a third party library like Pillow. And I've got videos on how to use Pillow for images in the playlist. You can check the link for that in the comment section below. But for this, I can just use a PNG so I could just use this basic photo image thing. So we've defined our image. So let's say uh, define image. Now we need to put it on the screen. Now, normally we would pack or grid this into a label and it would put it up on the screen. And that's fine, that works, but then you can't put other things on top of it. You can't put images, you can, or you can't put text, you can't put buttons, you, you can't put text boxes, anything at all on top of it, it's just where it is, unless you use place. Now we've talked about pack, we've talked about grid, we haven't really talked about place really at all in this playlist because it's just not that common, or it's not as common. But for something like this, place works very well. And I'm not gonna go into the details of using place in this video. I may do some videos on place later if people are interested in it, but I am just gonna show you how to use place for this very specific thing. So what we wanna do is create a label. So let's uh, create a label. And I'm just gonna call this my underscore label. And this is a label, we wanna put it in root, and we want the image to equal BG, which we just defined right here. So normally we would go, you know, my underscore label dot pack, pack this on the screen and we'd, be, and we'd be good to go. But we don't wanna use pack, we wanna use place. And now we need to set several things. We need to set an X coordinate, so I'm gonna put this at zero. We need to set a Y coordinate, that's at zero. Remember X and X, Y coordinates on the coordinate plane. X is left to right, Y is up and down. So we wanna put this at zero, zero, which is I guess the top left corner of our app, like it would be like up here, right? So, okay, we also need to set the rel, the relative width, that's REL width, and we'll set that to one, and the REL relative height, we'll set that to one as well. So now if we go ahead and save this, and this is image underscore BG, so we can go Python image underscore BG dot pi. And when we do, we get our image as the background. Now, how do I really know that it's the background? Well, we don't, we have to actually put something on top of it. So. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. So let's add something to the top of our image, right? So we could do all kinds of things. Let's go my underscore, uh, I don't know, text. And this is gonna be a label. We wanna put it at root. We want the text to equal uh, welcome, whatever. And we can give this a font equals, let's make this Helvetica and make it really big, let's say 50. And if we want, we could change the colors, change the FG to, I don't know, what do we want to make this say black or we could say white, any other color we want. We can also set the background as well, but for now I'm going to leave it like that. So let's go my underscore text dot pack. 
And now we can give this a pad Y of like, I don't know, 50 to really push it down the screen. And now you'll notice we're using pack and place in the same sort of parent widget area in our root app. And normally you can't do that. You can't use like pack and grid in the same parent. You can use pack and then put something, you could pack like a frame and then in the frame you could do grid and vice versa. But in the same sort of parent open thing here, you usually can't use both pack and grid. Well, here you can use place and pack or place and grid, which is one of the nice things about place. So we can do that. So let's go ahead and save this and run it to see what this looks like. And we see we've got our text on top of our image and it works. Now, this is great. It works fine. This is perfectly all right. But now we've got a background under our widget and that might not work. It, this kind of looks goofy, right? We've got this big square chunk of thing here. And likewise, we can also put some buttons here. So if we wanted to uh, add some buttons, we could go my underscore button uh, one. This is a button. We want to put it in root. We want the text to equal, uh, let's just say exit. We can my underscore button one dot pack. Give this a pad Y of like 20 to push it down a little bit. Go ahead and save this and run it. That seems okay, but here's the problem. Let's say we want to grid a bunch of buttons together in a line, right? So we would create a frame like normal. So my underscore frame, it's going to be a frame. We want to put it in a root. Then we would my underscore frame dot pack this thing. And let's give this a pad Y of 20, push it down the screen. So now we can put our buttons inside my frame. So instead of putting this in a root, we want to put it in my frame. Instead of packing it, we want to grid it. And let's put this in row equals zero, column equals zero, and give it a pad X of like 20 or 10 or whatever. Let's make it 20. Now let's copy this and let's add a couple more of these, say two, two more. So let's change this to my button two and my button three, and instead of exit, let's say start, and let's say reset, whatever, right? So column, this will be column one, this will be column two. So we've got a, a grid of buttons going left to right. So let's save this and run it, and you'll see what the problem is here right away. Same thing, we're getting the background to be this big blocky thing, right? Now, if, you've got a specific image like this with a very specific background, you can get around this by setting the background color to say, for instance, this blue. Uh, let me go ahead and just copy this to Photoshop. Let me just pull this over real quick. So we can pull this into Photoshop and grab the eyedropper and then click here and get this exact color. So then we can come up here and you could see here is the HTML code for this color. So we could take this back to our app, we could close this. And for instance, we could come over here to our frame and we could set the background color to do that, right? So let's put this in quotation marks, go ahead and save this and run it. Now it works, right? So the background is the same thing. We could do the same thing with this label here. So we could come back here and we can come up to our label. Where did that go? Right here. Here we set the foreground color. We could also set the background color, right? And add the little hashtag there. So save this and run it. And okay, that works. So if your background image allows for that, you're fine. If your background image is multicolored, right? This isn't gonna work. If it's a gradient, this isn't gonna work, right? This will stand out. But if you have a basic color background with a single solid color in the background, like for instance, this light blue color, you can do that. So this is the first method. This is the easy method. And here you can make your app any other way you want from, from here on out, placing widgets and text boxes and buttons and labels and anything you want anywhere you want in the normal pack or grid way, right? So strictly speaking, this works just fine. But like I said, if you've got a different background, so for instance, if we change this background to, let's come up here and instead of mario.png, I've got one called space.png. 
if we go ahead and save this and run it, you can see, okay, now this doesn't work, right? And if we, again, copy this to Photoshop, give me a second here, right? And then use our eyedropper tool. Okay, we can get a color, right? And maybe this works, maybe it doesn't. We can come back here, let's close this out, head back over to our label and set that, where did it go? Right here, set that background color to that purple color, save it and run it. You can see, okay, it kind of works, but you can still definitely see this and this is not good. This doesn't look great, right? You can see it's a solid purple color underneath here and we wanna see the stars and stuff, right? So this isn't gonna work. So this brings us to our second method using the canvas. Now we've talked about the canvas in other videos in the playlist in pretty good detail. We've drawn on the canvas, you know, we've drawn images and moved them around like in a game and things. We've done all kinds of cool canvas stuff, but you can actually use the canvas just to sort of set the background. The problem with that is you then have to put all of your widgets and all of your things in that canvas in a specific way. And I'll show you how to do that right now. It's just a little more complicated than normal, right? So it's like a couple extra steps, but it will get rid of this problem completely. So let's head back over here and let's see here. Let's come up here and let's just comment out all of this. So three single quotation marks. We can come down here and three more single quotation marks. So all of this stuff is now commented out, except we've defined our image still. So, okay, that's good. So now let's create a canvas and I'm gonna call this minor square canvas. And this is gonna be a canvas and we wanna put it in root and that's good. Now let's minor square canvas dot pack this guy onto the screen and you can pack this or grade it, whatever you want. Now you can very specifically set the width and height of your canvas. If you do, you need to come down here and give this a fill of both. And let's give it an expand of true. So it'll expand out to the whole thing of, you know, whatever you're doing here. And I'm putting this at 800 by 500 because that's what we've put our app as up here, right? So, okay, we've got this. Now we just need to set an image in the canvas. So let's say set image in canvas, right? So to do that, we call my underscore canvas dot create underscore image, right? Now we need to give this some coordinates. This will be an X and a Y coordinate. So again, we wanna put it at the top left, right? And now we can set an image. So let's set this to BG. Now we're gonna to need to do something else to this too. I'll show you in a second, but for now, let's run this and see how this looks. It's not gonna look great. You can see the image is shoved right up here in the top here. And you can't really tell, but this is not the entire image. It just, it didn't crop it. It just chopped it off, right? So the rest of this image continues out. And you could, we could see this if we look at, instead of space, let's call Mario, save this and run it. You can see the little, little hammer, the little uh, bad guy isn't there anymore. So it hasn't squeezed it down. It's just grabbed a section of it and chopped it off. So that's no good. So what we need to do is set an anchor. So we need to come down here to our create image and we need to anchor this in the Northwest. Northwest is the top and left. So top left, right? So this will put this in the top left corner and it'll allow it to expand out. So we go ahead and save this come back here and run this guy again. Now we have it pulled all the way out and everything looks good. So we can keep that like that if we want, or we could come back up here and instead use our space guy, save this and run it. Doesn't really matter at this point. I'll use the space one because that better shows that we can make things truly transparent. So, okay, we've got this canvas thing and it's pulled it all out. Now we need to put whatever we want in our app into the canvas. And this is where it gets a little trickier, right? It's not tough, but it's it's trickier. So let's uh, add a label. Now we know the normal way to do this, right? We create our label, we place it or pack it or whatever, right? Here we go, create a label, we pack it, right? Not so with the canvas. Everything's a little bit different here. So what we need to do is let's call my underscore canvas. Now we want to dot create underscore text. 
Now they're not all like this, all the widgets aren't like this, but the text is. So here we need to position this, and this is x, y coordinate. So I'm gonna give this a, an x coordinate of 400 and a y coordinate of 250. We'll see what that looks like in a minute. Let's go set the text to welcome, and we can set the font equal to Helvetica, like no normal, and set this to 50. Okay, so if we save this and run it, we see boom, the text is there. It's truly transparent. We can see we can see the stars in the background, and that's cool. Now, if we want to change the color of the text, it's a little different. We set the fill to whatever color. So this would be fill equals white. Instead of normally, we would put this as FG, right? So for the canvas, we need to put fill. So if we save this and run it, boom, our text becomes white, right? So that's how you do that. And same thing, we can do the whole thing with the buttons again. So let's add some buttons. And I'm just gonna call this button one. And this is gonna be a button. We wanna put it in root. We want the text to equal, I don't know, start. And let me just bang out a couple more buttons here. So let's go to three. This one will be start. This one will be reset. And this one will be exit. Or maybe, maybe like reset scores or something, whatever we want. So we create some buttons. Now to add these to the canvas, it's it's a little different than normal. We would call button underscore we would call button one underscore window, let's just call this. And this is gonna be a my underscore canvas dot create underscore window. And here we give it an X, Y coordinate. So let's put this at X 10 and Y of 10. We wanna anchor this in again, the Northwest. So let's just put it up in the top corner. And we give this a window of button one, right? So let me copy all this. So that button one right there, that's this, right? So we're saying, hey, make this into a window, add that window into our canvas. That's just sort of how it works. So uh, let's do this for each of these. So let's go button two and button three. Let's change this to uh, X of 50 and let's change this to X of 130. We wanna keep the Y coordinate as 10 because we wanna line them up in a row. and Let's change this to button two and button three. Go ahead and save this. Let's run this. You see now up here in the top, we've got these three buttons. They're nicely spaced. You can't, can't really tell, but they are in fact transparent. There's nothing underneath here. And we can make this more obvious if we want by sort of fiddling with this. So let's, let's move this to say 100 and this to 230 just so we can really tell that they're transparent. We can space them out, right? And you can see, you can definitely see the stars between these buttons. And that's how you do that. So this way is better because everything is truly transparent, but it's harder because it's working with a canvas and there's weird little things like, you know, using fill to change the color. Normally it's FG. So you have to sort of unlearn some things, relearn some things. Also some weird things like these, adding windows and stuff, right? But once you sort of figure this out, it's not that bad. And then you can use background images however you want in your app. I notice we've got sort of a, a border around here. You can take that off in the normal way by configuring your route and all that good stuff. So a really sort of interesting concept using background images for your apps in Kinter. It's a lot harder than it really should be. That's just one of these weird Kinter things that you have to kind of use a hacky solution to get it to work like this. But in the end, it's really not that difficult. It gave you two pretty good ways to go about it. If your background image is a basic image with a solid color of some sort, just use your place and it's as easy as can be. And there's nothing else to really do. Set your background color to whatever the background color is of your image and you're good. If your image is more complicated, like all these starry things, you're gonna have to need to use the canvas. Otherwise, you're gonna get those big blocky text things of weird colors, which is no good. And uh, that's how that goes. So that's all for this video. If you'd like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out Codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships. They pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from Codemy.com and I'll see you in the next video.